Today we're going to talk about how FDM 3D print farms can actually become the most reliable component of your supply chain. 3D printing is often considered to be low scale, but that is incorrect. We routinely here at Slant 3D produce hundreds of thousands of parts. It's very easy to do. All you have to do is have enough machines to do it, which is what we have. Our core mega farm is spec'd out for 3,000 machines. So even if a part takes 24 hours to make, we're able to produce 3,000 of them a day. And we have additional factories going in. So the scale is not a problem. So now let's look at it just as apples to apples with other types of processes. First of all, if a supplier is to be a reliable supplier, it has to have have a reliable supply. FDM is the only 3D printing process that does not use proprietary materials. It's able to source from the existing injection molding supply chain using the same types of beads to create its filament so it is able to scale up and always have supply of that material around as compared to other processes that rely on proprietary materials. So FDM is the only one that can reliably hit the same scale and make sure it always has enough of what it needs to continue operating. Print farms also have an enormous advantage over traditional manufacturing because they have no single point of failure. Since we have hundreds to thousands of machines in a single facility, if a single machine goes down, it really doesn't matter. It's a blip on the graph rather than the entire factory going down if an injection molding machine breaks. 3D print farms also have the advantage of generally being closer to the source. We are building factories across the United States in order to be close to the main metropolitan areas to make sure that parts can be produced and delivered as quickly and affordably as possible. And molding sites just aren't able to do that. There's too much skill that is in a localized area. There's too much heavy machinery that is generally in a localized area. They can't just pop up very easily. Whereas print farms can go anywhere from a shipping container to a plant and be able to reliably produce parts in the same way because each one is composed of those smaller cells that are easier to distribute and align in the area where they belong. And they most certainly do not produce parts across on the other side of the ocean and then ship them across where you can lose them in shipping, lose them at the docks, lose them at the truck, have them fall off the boat, all of these kind of things that would prevent your parts from getting to you reliably. There's just less shipping involved because the parts can be produced more closely to where the parts are actually going to be used. Now those are all the kind of traditional aspects of supply chain. Is the supplier supplied? Can the supplier produce reliably? Can the supplier ship reliably? But then 3D printing has all kinds of other advantages inside of your supply chain. One of the most prevalent is that it never runs out. We are not producing a single part for you and then that's the batch and then the mold will age out or anything along that line. No, as soon as a design is made, it is stored forever and can be produced again at any time in the future without having to re-engineer. Basically, a button just has to be pushed and the part will grow and can ship out. So you are never actually out of stock. You are able to store parts for eternity and pull them up next year, next week, next month, next millennia, and still get the same part that you originally ordered. And a side effect of that is that changes are really easy. If you get your first batch of parts and you need to make a modification because fit is a little bit off, or you get some feedback from your customers that makes you wanna change how it actually comes together and how it looks, you can make that modification and effectively just upload a new file. And it's not retooling and grinding and welding and all this kind of stuff that creates a big old reset up process. It's just sending another file with a few modifications and then you're ready to go again. So you're not setting your product into stone. You can just iterate on it and move on. Now those are all tremendous advantages of FDM print farms over other traditional manufacturing processes. But it's not all roses and sunshine. There are downsides to this that you have to be considered. The first of which is, is that parts cannot go from a process like injection molding and go straight into 3D printing. That's a dangerous move that will give you an inferior product. You have to re-engineer and redesign the part for the process that you're gonna make it with. The same way you wanna to try to put a square peg into a round hole. They're different things, make sure you're optimizing for the different thing. Now there are resources around including like this channel where we talk about all of those design modifications that can be made, but it is a step that has to be made. The other downside is kind of a readjustment of your supply chain. 3D printing operates differently. Rather than producing 100,000 parts and giving them to you in a shipping container, generally what we would prefer to do is produce 10,000 parts per month over the year when you're gonna be consuming these parts so that machine utilization can be a little bit more stable rather than a giant spike and then nothing. Modifying your supply chain to ingest that smaller flow rather than those big old dumps can be an adjustment for some companies. And just the thought process of being able to modify your design or maybe having it printed on demand are all shifts that might have to occur inside of the organization in order to effectively utilize 3D printing at scale. 
But those are just shifts in organization. They don't fundamentally prevent 3D printing from working. It just is something to be aware of while you're working with it. Overall, FDM print farms provide a huge amount of reliability, a huge amount of flexibility, and a huge amount of sustainability to where they can reduce waste, improve the reliability of your whole system, and still use a lot of the existing infrastructure out there, like the core plastics themselves, in order to continue producing parts. But it does require readjusting how you go about your supply chain to make sure that you're designing for the process and planning for what that process might require in order to do it affordably and at scale. But all of those are fixable and we're here to help you if you need it. Go ahead and check out some of our other videos. We talk about this topic in a lot more depth on each one of those core issues. And be sure to like and subscribe if you wanna see more of these types of videos. Have a great day, everybody.